many ways to make great music, but there's also many ways to make music great. I chose classical music as a profession way back in high school. I grew up in a musical family in Highland Park, and we loved to play music. I uh, was turned out to be pretty good at it early on, and um, I just love how symphonies uh, say so much. They speak volumes about the human condition, uh, just like a great movie. So I uh, eventually joined the DSO, and um, uh, we toured and uh, we recorded quite a bit, and uh, we played deeply meaningful concerts for our loyal audiences every year, and uh, loved it so much that I wanted to share it. But because I understood, recognized, and cared that the vast majority of Americans were turned off by m classical music, I. Um, resolved to bridge the gap of understanding uh, as an extension of my art form. Soon I began arranging famous symphonic music for a mixed octet called cut time players in the DSO. And a cut time is a symbol in our music meaning two beats per bar for a fast and lively or swinging beat. And I wanted to make our programs lively and swinging for popular culture to try. Um, so without lyrics, a uh, singer or, or even a strong beat, classical music needs an introduction that prepares listeners to notice the waves of dramatic tension and release that build to a glorious climax, and who doesn't like a good climax? <laughs> <laughs> and when eventually I began composing, uh, using the standards set by Mozart and Schumann, I blended some of today's dance grooves, just like they did back then, to start another mini orchestra of strings called Cut Time Symphonica. And we added a drummer and games and improvisation uh, as I brought freelance players uh, into restaurants, bars, and clubs uh, to Americanize classical music. Uh, and eventually I quit the DSO to complete a new business model uh, hiring musicians across the country. You see, everyone deserves classical music, but it became apparent to me that we musicians need to be direct and tell people what they need to know, such as that uh, we shape the music just like an actor might shape their lines, or how to sing Brahms' famous Hungarian dance number five. Check it out. The words are la da -dee. Da, 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 da. I knew I was going to do that. Hold on. That's even worse. All right. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. One, two. So this is the way This is the way the cut time way of Americanizing classical music. 
of wearing the fun and joy on our sleeves so that the curious can know the why and the how classical music can still matter. The church-like experience in the concert hall is perfect for internal listening in the spirit of meditation. But what's been missing is a fun club-like experience that focuses on you, the curious audience, and what you'd like to know and do to truly access classical music. You see, classical music is more than just mindless notes on a page. It's a gym. And we, every day we, we lift these heavy notes, this heavy music, building our muscles for making music meaningful. Living inside the music and bringing out our best inner game is the goal, a consequence of those mindless notes. And that's how I realize we're not in the music business, we're in the inspiration business through music. And that means we better make sure we connect with our audiences. Cut time is infotainment. So we want you to join us more, and uh, we need some volunteers. Mike is going to pass out a couple of egg shakers here, and uh, you'll just watch him and play the rhythm he plays. But don't drag. We're going to play one of my compositions called Pork and Beans, and it's not the soup can variety at all. It's, uh, it's a few bites. We take a few bites of a spicy barbecue pork, and then a few bites of uh, our second theme, which is uh, spicy Latin beans. And the heat builds up to a huge climax. Uh, which we don't cool down at all. Here we go. One, two. <laughs> Those shakers. That's it. Thank you very much. Take a bow, Mike.